thankful. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you. I, I know we can just kind of zone out and check out and clap our hands at the same time, but if you actually have a thankful heart, I want you to focus on him. Lift your voice and tell him how you feel. Oh, God, I love you, Jesus. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. Oh, Lord, thank you for bringing me here today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Anybody glad they're in the house of God here today? Amen. I am glad everyone is in the house of God here today. Amen. Chantel, what's up? You know? Praise God. <laughs> I am glad you are in the house of God here today. And I'm glad you're between these two people here that are currently the best versions of themselves that they've ever been. Because they've allowed God to do what he can do and they've done what they can do. And that's a real good team. Praise God. Amen. And I, I guess technically we're all hopefully in that same, same boat trying to just do what we can do and allow God to do what he can do. Amen. It's, that sounds like a simple formula, doesn't it? And it is. But we can, we can complicate that. Amen. Love seeing these uh, little brothers in the house right here. My man on the front row, learning how to worship God, learning how to pray. That's what a real man does, boy. A real man. That's right. Nine years old, right? Nine years old. Happens to be how old I was the first time I came to a Pentecostal church and encountered a very, very real God and a whole lot of loving people. And I promise you there were people who looked at me and probably didn't want to shake my hand. <laughs> and uh, he's, this man's looking sharp. He, his jacket is matching his jeans. He's got relatively new shoes on. I mean, this man is in such better condition than I. This guy, too, look at him. Looking, looking okay over there. Look at him smiling and everything. Man, I was a wreck. I was a wreck the first time. I, you all, you, do you, I wish we had a picture. I, w I wish we did. Erica, I had, I had, okay, it was like January. So I had this snowsuit on that was like 100 sizes too big. It was given to me. I had moon boots on. Y'all laughing now. I'm from the ghetto. Moon boots on that were 100 sizes too big. Probably hadn't showered in I don't know how long. My, probably didn't have socks on. Had crazy palm tree hair. And my heart had always wanted to know God. My heart had always wanted to come in contact with God. And I didn't know that that would be the day that I did. And I'm sure glad that God looks at the heart. He looks at the outside too, but I'm glad he could see what the others couldn't see. Oh, praise God, and look what God can do. <laughs> Jesus, if there's anything good in me, it's him. But just, just do not underestimate. Amen. Praise God. The book of Daniel. Lame. The chapter 12. For those of you that may not have been here last service, this will be connected to that. 
And um, real quick, I do want to say I appreciate everyone, again, who uh, came to the graduation, everybody who has been involved in fundraising and involved in just duties uh, to keep things moving forward in all the regards. Um, we gave honor to those who impacted Zion and helped him to be the man that he is today. And graduating is part of that. And Brother Daniel was gone. But thank you, Brother Daniel, for your impact in his life. It has only been a positive thing. And it's very much appreciated. I already thanked Liz. That's why I'm just kind of... Anyway, praise God. You can share some of that if you want. Praise the Lord. You're welcome. Amen. The book of Daniel, chapter 12, and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. There shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. Somebody say epic. This is an epic time here. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. So if you, if you don't know if your name is in the book we're talking about, well, it's real easy. There's a way to get it to get adopted into the family of Jesus Christ. And I'm so thankful that it is all good. I'm thankful that I can have my sins washed away by baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, that he can forgive me of all of my sins, that he can put his name on me. And instead of going from that ghetto fabulous wreck that came off the street that God knew a little more about Erica than anybody else knew, he adopted me into his royal family. And I'm glad about that. So there's a way to get your name in the book. And it starts with being honest with ourselves. It starts with having an open heart to, to God when He reaches out and you start feeling Him. You start feeling that, that, that power. You start feeling that, that weird, strong thing. And it, it can be kind of scary. But I promise you, there's nothing you need to be afraid of. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shout that they're dead. In case you're wondering, they're dead. Sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, we got, an, we got a, a choice to make. And thank God we can choose which one we want. And verse 3, our last verse here, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Anybody in here want to be wise and not foolish here today? Well, you're in the house of God. That's a good right first step to not being a fool and being wise. Praise the Lord. They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Forever and ever. I want to bring the word of the Lord to us today. Till the stars appear. Till the stars appear. Would you please lift your hands and your voice with me right now and call on Jesus. Lord, I'm in desperate, desperate need of you today. Lord Jesus, let your word be anointed, God, in my lips of clay, God. Oh, Savior, let there be wisdom and knowledge. Let there be understanding and revelation go forth. Oh, God, let your word minister to me. Let it build me. Let it strengthen me. Let it, let it do these things and more to your people, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. I give you praise and I thank you for this service. I thank you for these tremendous people that you love, that you have called into your house today. God, I want to be open to whatever you want to do in this place, Jesus. I trust you. I thank you, and I love you today, God. I want to leave this place closer to you in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It, you can worship the Lord if you'd like. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want you to, to high-five somebody you have not yet done so with before you're seated. In Jesus' name, high-five them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then you may be seated in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 
All right, there you go. Praise God. Somebody say praise the Lord. Everybody say praise the Lord. Oh, Jada was zoning out. Everybody say praise the Lord. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't got to be paying attention around here. Amen. I just look over at Emily. She goes. <laughs> she knows me. <laughs> praise God. We have an enemy here to today. Now, don't start looking around like, where's he at? Who's the bad guy? I got it. That's not what. That's not what I meant. Oh, hey, hey, remember the puppet show? Do you remember the epicness? There's the word again today. I never say this word unless it's needed. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's needed. In the when the devil would appear and the other one would put the smack down on. That was the most. That was hilarious. I love. That was so good. Anyway, thank you guys who did all that. Amen. Uh, there is an enemy, your enemy, here today. And uh, some people say, well, man, the devil don't come to church. Well, he does. <laughs> the devil can come to church. There's all, kinda, all, there's all kind of spiritual forces around us right now. Did you know that? I know Hollywood will give you crazy movies and TV give you crazy stuff, but they're, they're just trying to represent something that is real. They just usually do it not very accurately. All right, so angels are real. Devils are real. God is real. Praise God. And the people of God are real. Any of those in the house here today? Amen. It's not just a Bible story about a, a thousand years ago about all the people of God back then. There are people of God today that know him, that love him, that are connected to the powerful God that made this earth, that made everything. Praise God. And we got a house full of people like that here today. The, amen, Brother Woody. I love the enthusiasm. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, the enemy here is very old, very ancient. I've had some kind of, what some would say, scary supernatural experiences that, and you can get, you, you can, sometimes you can just tell the size of the demon you're dealing with. And uh, there are some very ancient and evil uh, enemies that, that we have to contend with. Uh, they are very determined to destroy you. They are very determined that they are educated in humanity. Because they've been studying man and woman for longer than we've been here by a long shot. And so we're not just in a battle that we can afford to just, you know, it, it'll be okay. I'm going to win no matter what. We have to be on guard. We are dealing with an enemy that is very, very skilled and very determined. But... We also have a destiny in God. I know some people don't say amen right there because they, they, they flinch spiritually. Because this world and this, this spiritual, this, this, this church world, if you will, can go, oh, you know, you don't, no matter what you do, you're going to be saved, you're going to be lost based on something else, and it's just only God, and you're, there's this predestiny mystery thing. It's really not a mystery. It's very simple. But they, they kind of freak out, Sister Sandra, like, oh, man, I can't even say amen to something like that because they just don't understand what it means. Okay, so I'm here to tell you today that there is a battle, there is an enemy, but we also have a destiny in him. Because of the price that he paid and the price that he continues to pay for you and I. Okay, so everybody's still with me. Raise your hand if you're with me. I ain't lost nobody yet. All right, praise God. So, uh, the, the destiny starts when we get, somebody say, in him. There's a lot of people can say, well, man, you know, Adam and Eve, we're all brothers and sisters. We're all going to the same place. Everything's okay. Everybody's going to be saved. Uh, potentially, yes, because the price has been paid. So it doesn't matter who you are or who I am, thank God. doesn't matter what family you come from. doesn't matter what problems you deal with. It doesn't matter what sins are just natural in your, in your life. Oh, Lord. I've got I to stay focused right here because I, I'm wanting to talk about all kinds of things right now. 
But let me just put it down like this. It doesn't matter. Look, something being natural to you, if God says it's a sin or a problem, it is just that. Can I remind us this month that lying is natural? Doesn't nobody go to school for lying? Hi, I'm just here to learn how to lie. It's an automatic thing. Sin is in us. We are born in sin. That's why he said you got to be born again. <laughs> of water, in baptism, of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the, the Spirit of God living within us. So, so just because, Erica, somebody goes, well, that's just how I am, and that's just what feels right to me, and that's my version of truth, and, and it's just natural to me, so it's okay. I beg to differ, because murder falls under the same category. I'm naturally murderous. I'm naturally angry and abusive. I, I mean, so, so just being natural, just, it's just in me. That's just how I was made. That doesn't, that's not the end of the story. That's not just, that, that's not the thing that says it's okay because it's not. Anybody know what I'm talking about here today? Hey, I'm thankful for a God that doesn't split hairs. He doesn't care nothing about that. All he cares about is I paid the price. Do you want in? Do you want in the family of God? Do you want in the power? Do you want in the deliverance? Do you want in the strength that comes from knowing me that's what God is concerned about not where you came from not how long you were there boy I, I posted just not too long ago on another app uh, about uh, you know don't don't keep just hanging on and it's got a little picture of barbed wire in a, in a hand don't keep hanging on to a mistake just because you took a long time to do it and to get it and I'm just so stubborn that boy I'm telling you what when God listen to me when God begins to illuminate the truth from the the fallacy and the lies and the fakery of this world when God starts drawing you closer to him when God starts working in your life whether you understand all of it or not you better pause and understand that it is at that juncture that the rest of your life can be made or broken Anybody thankful for a good and merciful God that found you where you were, but he loved you too much to leave you where he found you. He brought you up. He brought you out. He allowed, oh my God. Hey, I'm thankful for his blood that he shed for me. I'm thankful for, for the power of the spirit. I'm thankful, Brother Woody, that he's not done with me today. It wasn't just a one-time thing. Well, come and, come and sign the church book or shake the preacher's hand. And, and hey, hey, can I say it like this? It's not even just get the Holy Ghost one time. It's not even just get the Holy Ghost one time. And, 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 and it's not even just get the Holy Ghost one time. Say, I won't say it again. It's not even just get the Holy Ghost one time. But it is something to nurture. It is something to guard. The Holy Ghost can guard us if we guard it. It can save us if we save it. Well, what's the Holy Ghost? It's the Spirit of God. The same Spirit that was in Jesus Christ, the perfect dude. Praise God. So... We have, now I got off there talking about the destiny. Somebody say the destiny. destiny. The destiny that you have. Now, now I know we can, we can think about who we are and we can go, well, I'm not good. I, I, I'm, I'm from this. I struggle with that. I've got all kinds of problems in my life. I want to I take you back. I want you to remember how God, Brother Shavaris, you remember the first service with us? I thought you would. There was a special thing that God was doing. And he, he proved some things to you in that service that I didn't know he was even doing. But God knew what he was doing. God knew how to speak your language. God knew how to, how to come to you and, and, and show you some things that you didn't have, you've been wondering about for years and years and years. And God, in one service, showed you things and proved some things. And, and thank God, it was the, somebody say, the start it was the start of something precious. It was the start of something that has to do with destiny. 
Think about you and, and when you came here and, and the things that God did in your life. I just look around this building and I have so many stories that I want to just share and so many amazing things that God and how God uh, did and how perfect he was in your situation and, and how God used preaching and how God used uh, worship and how God used other people and, and, I, and I look and I, and I remember some of you being on the edge and, and, and wondering oh God is this really you and, and am I going to trust you in this and am I going to surrender to you like you're asking me to do and in none of those cases did God come down and make you love him, make you trust him, make you surrender yourself. God didn't do it, but he has been faithful, hasn't he? God has been good to you. Praise God. We've seen miracles. We've seen signs and wonders uh, all pointing to the will of God in our being here. Uh, we, we can look back at our anniversary service. We can look back at the countdown. We can look back at several key moments in, 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 what, was, in what God was doing here because God was doing it with you. This is not just my story. This is not just me saying, oh, here's how precise God was. And, 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 uh, no, you had a lot to do with everything that God was doing here. Because believe it or not, there's a whole lot of control that we have in what he does, even though this is his house. You have a lot of control in what God will do in the rest of this service. So you all can look back at how God has dealt with you since coming here and how faithful he's been. And, and you didn't think he was going to come through, but he did. And, 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 you, and you came and, and somebody told you, hey, get ready to hear a word from God. It's going to be exactly what you need. And you doubted that. You said, oh, it's probably just going to be some generic uh, cookie, you know, a fortune cookie type of deal. Like, oh, you're the type of person that enjoys breathing. Oh, nailed me. How did they know? They're psychic. Like, come on. You really want money. How do they know me? Are they following me? Like, no. God was specific to your needs. God was scary precise <laughs> to, to, to your needs and your situation time. And, and it happened that first time. And then, and then somebody said, well, get used to it. And you're like, no, ain't, ain't no way. Because the first time was a fluke. That was too much. Jesus, you can't do that twice. <laughs> come on back and watch it happen over and over so each one of us have have these stories and they all equate to God and his concern for you they all equate to the destiny that you have in him and in his will how many times did did we leave service at nine or 9.30 or 10 or whenever it was and we knew God visited us right here. And during the pre-service prayer, God showed up. Or during the worship, God showed up. During the preached word of God, God showed up. During the response to the word, God himself showed up. How many times did you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you were in touch with the Almighty God? More times than not. Praise God, perhaps not ever did you leave going, yeah, God didn't even show up. I don't think I can remember a time that that's happened. So, thank you. There's that. Through all of these things, there was opportunity for you to build yourselves or to tear yourselves down. There was opportunity to be built or torn down by others. There was opportunity to reciprocate destruction and doubt or faith and edification. There's always been a foundation that we're building on here. Somebody say foundation. There's always been a foundation that we are building on here. And, and I know I was gone just a little while and uh, some of the conversations that I've had with other preachers across the country very interesting uh thank god that i'm able to say the foundation of this house is the love of god 
the foundation of this house is being uh, uh, as Christian to one another as possible and, and being loving and kind and, and, and forgiving and, and not showing up to church and having to act like we like it. Not have, having to drag ourselves to church because it's just what we have to do because I don't want to be yelled at or, or something like that or, or showing up to church and, and going, man, I sure hope pastor's in a good mood today. He hasn't been in a good mood for you know three months now and, and we're probably just going to get another whipping again. I am so thankful that it's not that way in this house of God. I, I'm, I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to you good folks. Th there's always been a foundation here and it, it, it needs to be a solid thing. It needs to be something that we can continue to build upon. And might I interject right now that this world will try to sell you. This wor world will try to tell you and convince you that it has what you need. Whether you're just a young kid raised in church or you're anybody else in this building, the devil is still a liar. And the Bible said he is the father of all lies. So if this world is screaming something opposite of what God is and what his word and what the church is, you just, you just understand he's just a liar. He's a liar. This world will tell you if you have enough money in your bank account, you're going to be just fine. Matter of fact, if you have mo enough money in your bank account, you'll have lots of friends. They're actually sponges. And when the money's gone, you know, I heard, hey, I grew up in this, and I, I heard preachers say this all the time, and I thought as a child, they have to be wrong. Because I wouldn't do this to someone. I wouldn't be somebody's friend just because they had money and then leave them. When they didn't, seems like that's when they need friendship most, right? That makes sense, doesn't it? I did not believe the preacher preaching this, but here I am preaching this exact same thing. You know why? Because I've seen it happen. I've experienced it. This world will tell you, if you have enough money and friends, you're going to be just fine. If you have a certain type of, of shoes or, or dress or suit or, or car or something, that you're going to be okay. But, but I'm here. You still can't build what you need to have a solid life. You still can't find it in the world. There's only one place you can find it, and that's in the house of God. It's in the family of God. It's in the word of God. He, he's a loving God. He's powerful. Brother Larry, the enemy tries to fake like he's powerful. He likes to front like he's powerful. But boy, when the, when the chips are down and, and the rubber meets the road, I tell you what, he is still the same dude that got cast out like lightning from heaven. He's still the same dude that could not defeat Jesus Christ, God, as a man in this earth. He's, hey, he's a loser and the father of losers and lies. How about that? Praise God. I'm glad I got Jesus. I'm glad I know I have a foundation I can build my life upon. I can build my life on it. So, there's a foundation and there's a wall and it's really built out the same type of elements. In Matthew chapter 12 and verse 30, it says, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. So in this whole thing, and just stay with me here, in this whole thing, we are either building on something solid, building it, edifying, doing, doing the right, or we're tearing it down. We're either guarding the thing that we can trust, or we're, we're letting things come in and tear it down. But I want us here today, before we move on, to, to just remember the destiny that God has proven that you're a part of. And I wish I had time. I don't have near the time. I wish I had time to go back and, and tell you how God called us here and how God brought us here and the, the miraculous evidence over and over that the, just too much, there's, there's loads of it. But I want you to think right now about your part, how you are intricately connected to these things that God has proven. Your destiny, your calling, your position. And there's no middle ground with God when he says, you're either with me or you're what? Against me. You're either gathering with me or you're what? 
or you're scattering. So I want you to understand your position. Somebody say my position. Understand your position in the call of God, in the destiny of God, and in what is going on here. Praise God. Are you thankful that you've got something that you can call your own? Hey, you don't have to just try to get to heaven on somebody else's relationship. You don't have, you, Ebony, you, you can't try to get to heaven just because mama knows how to pray. And, and you do too. And you know how to worship. That's why I can pick on you because it's, it's a win right there. Praise God. But it's hard to get to heaven just holding on to somebody else. I think the Bible says there's like it's going to be a moment in the twinkling of an eye where we're going to go from down here to up to where Jesus is, wherever that's at. Um, I don't know what kind of G-forces would be involved there, but I'm pretty sure ain't nobody here got big enough arms to hold on to somebody else's relationship with God to get you there. So you have something that you can build upon yourself. You have a destiny in the kingdom of God here. The kingdom of God is the most powerful thing in this earth. Do you realize that? It's not political anything. It's not kingdoms and kings. It's not the money system and the, and the corruption of all of those things. The kingdom of God in this earth is the most powerful thing, period, in this earth. And you have a specific spot in that here. You have a destiny in that. Well, praise that... So, I don't know, some of y'all thinking about I don't know what else that is more important than that. Well, I'm also a Sam's Club member. I'm part of the NRA. I don't know what, I don't know. Uh, Sister Rita, I'm just thankful that God found me and inducted me into the most powerful thing. The most unworthy person that I know of was me, still is, and God still decided to put me in something and allow me to try to build with him and, and guard things with him and, and my God, develop me. I, I'm not worthy to even know him. My God. Nehemiah chapter 4, Sister Shavares. Nehemiah chapter 4, read Brother Zach. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we built the wall, he was wroth. That we build the wall. Now we've been talking, I'm trying to put things together for you all here today. We're, we're talking about guarding some things, so building some things, the, the wall and the foundation. Somebody say amen. amen. Read. And took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren. Oh, man, man, hold on, bro. We're going to have to slow down just one second. Go and get a drink. And also, because I want you to notice this here, it came to pass that when Senballot heard that we build, man, people are going to hate as you work. Get used to it. Oh, it grieves me. It grieves me. It grieves my heart to see people half-heartedly try to live for God. And when somebody is, is in their life and being a, even a little bit negative, even a little bit of pressure about, what are you doing there? Oh, they just fall to pieces. Understand, when you're doing something right, somebody's going to complain about it. When you're the one working, you make them look bad. Misery loves company. Come back down to the bar. I heard you've been uh, not drunk for the past three weeks. Come on back down. We miss you. Come on, man. You just understand it's going to happen. It's going to happen. They heard that we build the wall. He was mad about it. He took great indignation. They'll act offended. Brother Dan, it doesn't even make sense for them to be offended about the stuff people be getting offended about lately. Like, oh man, you're doing good. That offends me? That's not even logical. Do you understand what a brain is? And how it works? It's not, it doesn't even make sense. To great indignation and mock the Jews. Oh, I can't handle being made fun of. I can't handle somebody talking about me. Well, you, you, you're not going to make it then. And he spake before his brethren and the army of uh, Samaria and said, What do these feeble, what, what are these weak people? 
Jews doing? What are God's people being all weak? What, what do they think they're doing? <laughs> oh, see, what? Well, see, they see you on the outside, but they don't understand that when you're weak, he is strong in you. And that no matter what they say, they can't change the reality of your destiny. And your God is still stronger than they'll ever be, even on your worst days, even on your bad days, even on your weak days will they fortify themselves will, will they get their life all straightened out oh you're going to church now huh John you're going to church now trying to be some kind of Christian yeah you're, you're just going to be a hypocrite like everybody else till the next time they see you till you start spitting wisdom oh I'm about to <laughs> Will they fortify themselves? Oh, oh, you still gangbanging, aren't you? I know, I know you're wearing a dress now, but that don't mean nothing. I know who you really are. I know who you've always been. <laughs> oh, you're going to get fortified, huh, Woody? Actually going to grow up, huh? Actually going to get stable and, and, and learn how to be a, the man that God called you? Oh, no, that, no, because I know how you actually are. And it was just not too long. Mm -mm, come on now. Will they fortify themselves? Will they? Will they sacrifice? Sacrifice does something to get God's attention. When you sacrifice, you have the attention of the Almighty God. Will they make an end in a day? Let me remind you that God can still do more for you in one service than you could ever believe. It, it, it may have taken you 30 years to get where you're at, far away from God or whatever the case is, but just in one service, my God can turn things around. Just in one service, there's sins that can be forgiven and washed away. There's power that can be, <laughs> um, you, you can be a part of something real and winning and, and, and you can have a destiny and you can take hold of that destiny in just one service. In just one service. Will they make an end in just a day? Huh. Will they revive the stones out of the heap of the rubbish which they which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him and he said, Read. Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Ooh, dist. <laughs> Burn. If a fox jumps on your wall, it's going to fall down. <laughs> Keep going, bro. Hear, O oh, our God, for we are despised and turn their reproach upon their own head. And give them for a prey in the land of captivity. And cover not their iniquity. And let, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee. For they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. Oh, so my. Built. Do you hear what these people are telling God right now? They're basically saying how it is anyway. This is, this is God was kind of like, yeah, I know. I, I know. I, I know. I didn't plan on just automatically covering the sins of the enemy of my people. Like, duh. Read. So built we the wall. And so built we the wall. We, we dealt with what they said. They, we dealt with persecution. We dealt with pressure. We dealt with them lying about us and, and trying to talk us out of it. But, but that did not stop our construction. We built the wall. Somebody say, we built the wall. We built the wall. And all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. Uh, if you can't get a hold of your mind, it's going to be very difficult trying to receive from God. Yeah. It's very difficult trying to hear the word of God. I've seen, see, see one other thing I like about this guy right here all these guys but he's new I gotta, I gotta talk about my man right here alright one other thing that oh now he's paying attention to you like say what is he talking to me alright you know what paying attention when you're young matters it matters Cassie how many kids did we see our age 
below us, above us, that just went right on into their 20s, disconnected every single service. Preacher, man, talking, preaching, bringing light to their darkness, bringing power to their weakness, but I, I just refuse to get my mind focused enough to listen. So they sat in a place where they could have been strong and powerful and wise and protected and used by God and connected to the most powerful thing, the kingdom of God in this whole, this whole earth, but yet service after service, there was this willful disconnect in their focus ability. I'm telling you, I get excited when I see little homies learning how to get a hold of God, Caleb, learning how to pray, learning how to worship, learning how to listen to the word of God. Something starts happening on the inside of them and the devil starts moving the other way because, uh, man, th God, praise God, it's, it's exciting. They had a mind to work. Now, I didn't say they had a mind to victory. We all want victory. We all want the, we all want the end result. But we got to take it one step at a time. Somebody say a mind to work. Now, that's still probably a better word than we, the one we just said a minute ago, right? Started with an S. S <laughs> Sacrifice, that's right. For the people had a mind to work, but it came to pass that when Sinbalad and Tobiah and uh, Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites, I should have Zach read that there, uh, heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped. Hey, don't be upset, folks, when you just start allowing God into your world and things seem to go wrong. Get, just, just understand, it's going to happen. Don't quit. Don't be a wimp. Come on now. You do know that that's how you get more things going wrong, right? If you respond so weak to the smallest early attack, devil's just like, all right, might as well take him out all the way. But if you got some backbone about you, man, I'm telling you what, you prove some things to God, yourself, and the enemy. The breaches began to be stopped. They were very wroth and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Somebody said there was a fight. The enemy showed up to fight. The enemy showed up not to play games, not to party, not even to say things and, and lie, and, but, but to, to fight. Ephesians 6, 12, 4, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. How often have I wished that that was the case? That'd be great. Thank you, Jesus. Bodies on the ground. Victory in my life. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. Don't think you can be powerless in living for God and expect to win. You are going up against powerful beings. Don't expect to be successful in life without the power of God. Because everything coming against you is powerful. You're not enough on your own and neither am I. I got to have the power of God or I have no hope. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers. They're already in place. They're already ruling things. You're born into this world under their jurisdiction. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is the situation that you're in, but look at the two verses before this, this, this situation report. That's what that verse was. It was a situation report. There's powers. There's evil things. There's bad things that are high and powerful and above you, and thank God that we have a way through that. He said, this is two verses before. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles, the tricks of the devil. Somebody say the armor. 
Anybody remember the armor around here? I'm trying to get through this message, but we, we, we got to talk about this just for a minute. Because I, I started having you guys remember your spot and how God specifically dealt with you, bringing you here, and how he proved himself to you, and, and how, you know, when, when you came there, I know we're all in the same boat, there was a great fight of affliction. You came and you started to allow God to work in your life. And the enemy attacked. We knew that was going to happen, though. No. That doesn't make it easy. And God proved it. And he proved it. And there was prophecy. And there was moves of God. And there was God showing up. And there was God speaking to the things of your heart that nobody even knew about. And, and he was speaking very clearly. And he just proved over and over that you are a part of the most powerful thing in this world. That's the kingdom of God here. He keeps proving these things. Please remember the armor. Please remember the prophecies about this church of which you are a part. Please remember that the principalities and the powers that, that we are coming against to take, uh, to, to take ground from and the authority of God that he's given us and the power that he's given us and the fact that he has chosen you to be a part of this task force and team of heaven these are not small things this is not just wednesday bible study let's talk about the fruits of the spirit i'm reminding you about the purpose of your life on this earth here today there was armor there was a passageway there was everyone else that went before us that did not see it that did not have control that did not find it but we found it and, and it's transformative and it, and it is to bring victories that no one else has ever seen here in the spiritual realm and that is why the enemy is fighting so hard that is why things have been off. That is why there, there's been attacks and, and, and all, ki all, all kinds of things going on. It's because of these very, very real situations that you are in the middle of. If you're a part of this church, you're a part of this battle. If you are a part of the body of Christ, you are a part of the destiny. You are a part. I, there, there's been prophecy about you. There's armor involved. Verse 9 says, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Back in our story of building the wall in Nehemiah, it continues from verse 8 into verse 9. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto God. Somebody say prayer. prayer. We made our prayer unto God, and we set a watch against them day and night because of them. I would to God that there be people sensitive enough in the Spirit in this church that they realize when it is time to do more than the average in guarding. Those who would understand that the battle is not just the, the everyday tumult, but it is special forces, and it is, it, is, it, is for, it is for a lot more than just powerful services and miracles, and we've seen, we, this is new, nothing new to us, we've seen all this kind of stuff. It, it, it's, it's for much more than that. See, because you, God, I'm thinking about Brother Wilson now and his teachings about these type of dominions and strongholds and, and, and how, to, how, to, how to have victory in cities and all this kind of stuff. And, and, and he said there are, there are devils that you can just walk up and cast out, but there are other principalities that do not flinch. There are other giants that do not just run away because you say, I'm a child of God and I'm here to have victory. And they look down in their evil darkness and they just kind of laugh a little bit. And they say, yeah, there's been a dozen others that have tried that. There's been a do dozen others that have, have uh, 
had to run away because of my principalities, my power, because I'm well fortified in this place. And that is the truth. I need to confirm this, but I found out, I was told recently that a very prominent, very powerful, worldwide known man of God started a church here in Pasco many, 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 many years ago. Where is he? Why did he not see it through? What happened? Where did it go? What's, do you see what I'm saying here, church? I know this is a different type of message, but I'm trying to shake you on a Wednesday. I'm trying to shake you into a reality of, of who you are. You're, 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 we got to get up and go to work, and we, gotta, we got bills to pay, and, and we got kids to raise, and we got neighbors, and, and we, have all, we have health issues, and we have life things, but all of that pales in comparison to this. All of that pales in comparison to the destiny that God has called you into. And there is a time to make our prayer unto God and to set a watch against them day and night. There's a time to take the battle more seriously than we took it last week. There's a time to understand just how cutthroat the enemy is, how capable the enemy is at destroying the people and things of God. Verse 10, and Judah said, the strength. <laughs> Judah, first thing out of his mouth, strength. If we're going to keep some things, church, if we're going to guard this wall, if we're going to build the wall and the foundation, how about we keep our praise where it needs to be? How about we keep liberty of the spirit in worship service and focus in worship service and then not become anything that it's not meant to be? How about that? Can, can Judah speak of strength or can it not? Come on. Anybody know that there is strength when you praise God? There is strength when you worship God and you, you give, because you know what? It gets your mind off of your problems, number one, and it gets it on him and his ability, not your weakness. Hallelujah. The strength of the bearers of the burdens is decayed and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversary said, they shall not know, neither see till we come in the midst amongst them and slay them cause the work, uh, and cause the work to cease. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, from all places whence ye shall return unto us, they will be upon you. Therefore said I in the lower places behind the wall, and on the higher places, I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. So two things real quick. You've got to have a strong enough mind. Oh, Jesus, here we are in 2022. just believing whatever the TV tells them to believe. Be afraid of everything. I mean, pe I'm, seriously, people, I mean, if, if, if certain CNN would say, or what, anyone, you know, to certain folks, you know, hey, you need to just pull out one eye and, o o and hop on your left foot for five minutes a day, and that'll, that'll save you. That'll There's, there would people, they'd be lining up to do it. I pray to God, the people of God have a mind not only to, to work, but a mind to think. And a mind to, even though somebody says something ten times, you have to stick to your guns. <laughs> Two A. You got to stick to your guns. You got to stick to what God has spoken. Oh, Jesus. So he put the people of God with their swords their spears, and their bows. And I looked and rose up and said, oh, that was just one. I said there was two things there, didn't I? The second, the second thing is this. The people of God. God's real people. I'm not talking about the people on TV. 
that just say, oh, your miracle's on the way. Just send a $500 check and then touch your TV. And I mean, they're, they're, what are they doing? And they're setting, they're, they're, they're fake. I, like, guys, it's crazy, the people that claim to represent Jesus. And they're going through people's Facebook before service, you know, visitors, and they're finding out stuff about them, and then they're getting message to the preacher up there, and then he's standing up here trying to provide a word of prophecy. Oh, I, I just get this, this terrible feeling that, that recently, you, you know, you were in an accident or something, and, and, but God had, oh, oh, how did he know? Well, it's on Facebook. The whole world knows. I wish I was joking. This happens every day. This happens every day. So that's not what's going on here. Thank God. The people of God, the real people of God are armed. They're armed with wisdom. They're armed with praise. They're armed with a mind to work and a mind to guard and, and hands that are not afraid to, to get dirty and, and they, they, they're armed with, with a foundation and they're armed with a wall. They, they, they got stuff. Hmm. I should have got my large my my large flashy one out. But that one would take an arm off. God's people are armed. God's people are armed. Now this world will tell you all you got to arm yourself with is pride. All you got to do is arm yourself with being self-centered. This, this is the, the order of the hour. All you need to do is arm yourself with what you want. Step on anybody you got to step on to get there. Disrespect whoever you got to disrespect. All you got, but you see, see, the enemy will try to arm us too. But God's people are armed with the effective tools, knowing that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. It blows my mind. I still don't understand parents and grandparents that can't decide to live for God enough as they watch their children and grandchildren be drowned in the fight of this world. It blows my mind. Hey, I'm thankful for some good folks in the house tonight that are going to be examples to their kids. Here's how you build a wall. Here's how you remain armed. Here's how you block the, the lies of the enemy. Here's how you pray. Here's how you worship. Here's how you be faithful. Here's how you get to know a powerful and real God. Thank you, parents. He set them up there with their bows and their spears and their swords. And, and he looked and he rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible. And fight for your brethren and your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. So you have to have a mind to work and you have to have a mind to fight. But you have to have just more than a mind. You actually have to have some tools and weapons to fight with as well. And it, shall, and it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and God had brought their counsel to naught that we returned all of us to the wall, everyone unto his work. And it came to pass. Did you know that you, you, yes, you, there are things that you have to do here that nobody else it, it's your area. There's things we all share, but there's things that God has for you in this specific kingdom and destiny that it's just you. So don't get all messed up judging somebody else. Why isn't pastor doing, why isn't, oh God, what about them? No, you focus on you. Let, they, let God focus on them. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work and the other half of them held both the spears and the shields and the bows and the harrigans and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. So don't get upset because God is trying to help you be a worker 
and somebody else is over there with a weapon. Well, I want to look cool holding that sword. I want to look cool with that bow, man. man. Hey, just do your part. The work part is the actual reason we're doing this. We're trying to build something. We're trying to save somebody. I want to do my part, whatever it is. They which build it on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. Man, we got something else going on here. We're working with one hand, and we're ready to fight with the other hand. Man, that had to be tough. For the builders, every one had his sword girded by his side, and so builded. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. Oh, come on. And I said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, The work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall, one far from another. In what place, therefore, ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye thither to us. When you hear the trumpet sound, run over and help somebody out. Because we know the plan of the enemy. We're just going to besiege you. We're just going to, there's going to be it's people everywhere. You can't handle all of us. Brother Woody, they forget one thing. Even if it's angels, <clears throat> only a third fell. It's still two to one in this fight, at least. Plus we got God, and that's kind of a game changer. But hey, more than that as well, or in addition to that, I'm thankful I got real brothers and sisters that if I'm down, they are going to rally to me. They are going to pray more. They are going to reach out and, and, and comfort, comfort one another with these words. And, 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 and hey, I want to see you at church, right? And we're going to worship, aren't we? And, and, and anybody know that, that encouraging is, is a real Christian thing to do? Everybody needs encouragement. Everybody. So we labored in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. We got to have a mind to work, even though this is a different situation than they've ever been in. I promise you, this is the first time they had swords and shields and spears and also tried to build a wall at the same time and had a guy with the trumpet trying to direct traffic. I mean, th this was a new thing. Church, I told you. God's people had to have a mind to work but also a mind to think. Well, what if things switch up? Well, well, learn how to follow it. What about in the Old Testament when the, they were led by the cloud, they were led by the pillar of fire just whenever God said it's time to go. He didn't take a vote. It's just time to move. We're talking about construction here. How many normal construction jobs are there in the Bible? Not that many. Build that big old boat because of rain. What is that? Just start building. It'll only take you 100 years. Don't worry about it. The construction of the tabernacle overlaid with gold and all the dimensions. and I, I mean, most construction things in the Bible were specific and unique. God's people that are called to build a wall, to build and guard the foundation that God is. Oh, I hope you all aren't checking out on me here. You have to be able to think on your feet. Do not put me in battle with somebody that can't think on their feet. Oh, we have to have a mind to work. We have to have a mind to think on our feet, even though things are different. We have to be able to guard things. We have to be able to add to things and not tear them down until the stars appear. Until the storm is over. Until hope returns. Until God's voice is no longer silent in Acts 27 in verse 20 it says and when neither sun nor stars neither sun nor stars and many days appeared and no small tempest lay it, it was a huge storm all hope that we should be saved was then taken away but after long abstinence the voice of God began to speak again the man of God began to speak. Paul stood forth in the midst and said, Sirs, you, you should have listened to me and not taken off from Crete and, and gained all the harm and all the loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, 
but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am. Will you say that with me? Whose I am and whom I serve. The stars will come out again. The voice of God will be clear again. There is hope that can be regained again. There, are, there, there is good cheer that can be embraced again. But what he started with right here was reminding him and all those around him, I am property of God. I have a destiny in this thing. I'm not a random person in the apostolics of Tri-Cities. I'm, I'm not just at this point in my life and it's all haphazard and, and who knows what's going to happen. I'm just a, a little a ball in the pinwheel machine and, and the what, it, things. Are, no, no, no. I am. am I, for there stood by me this night the angel of God whose I am and whom I serve. You're servants of the most high God. Your property of God himself. And back to Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse 1, And it came to pass when Senbal and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall and that there was no breach left therein. Hey, it sounds like a thing we say around here. If you're going to do it, do it right. Sounds like they did it right right there. Though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages on the plain of Ono. But they sought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing, oh, please just stay with me in these last few moments, church. I am doing a great work. I, I, I hope every day you get out of bed, you remember whose you are and whom you serve. And that whatever storm we're going through isn't here to stay. I hope you remember who you are and what you've been called into. I am doing a great work. Hey, you're, you're not just in the nine to five. You're not just here to exist and, and be hungry and eat and sleep and, and go to work and pay taxes and, and die. Some, that, you, you are called to something that is not only greater, it's everlasting. It's everlasting. I am doing a great work so that he is, they, it was his enemy saying, come on, just come on over here. Just be distracted. I know the, the, the job is almost over. You fought and you, and you guarded and you built and you did all these things. And it, Come on, before you put the gate on, before you seal the deal, before you put the lock on, come on, we want one more way in. We, we want to be able to, to penetrate and, and to destroy what you are doing with your life. What about that armor? What about the joints of that armor? More than one person here has said that they feel God is calling them to deeper levels of prayer. And when a call like that is ever not guarded and not embraced and built there are principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness of this world spiritual wickedness in high places that get away with murder there are needs that go untouched because of the lack of depth of prayer God does not just randomly call you to deeper levels of intimacy with him. There are needs that go unmet. I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? We have to refuse 
to come down. As your enemy, oh, I know tonight before you go to bed, he will have already begun planting seeds of doubt and all the good reasons why this can be dismissed. Come down from remembering your destiny in God. Come down from remembering the prophecies. Come down from remembering all of the, the miracles and the, and, and the moves of God himself that we've seen in our lives and in those around us in this. Come down from remembering the destiny that God placed in your hand. Just come down and he knew, he knew there was only destruction. They wanted to kill him. Meet me anywhere and see that is how your enemy works. He's not real picky what you choose to take the place of prayer. He's not real picky with what you choose to take the place of faithfulness to God. Sensitivity. Consecration. Just meet me anywhere so I can kill you before you get those gates on that city. But he said, huh, I'm doing a great work. I'm not going anywhere. Stand with me. Chapter 6. And verse 15. So the wall was finished. Mm. And this was the short version of the story. Feels like the long version. You know why? Because tonight, right now, we are challenging spiritual plans of the enemy. Of your enemy. There is no invisible person here that, that is, no, no, there's no invisible person here. Do you hear me here? The enemy is after you. The enemy is after this church. And the enemy is standing with all of the, the, the ribbons and medals on his chest of those who have fallen. And feeling so confident that you will be no different. That I will be no different. So the wall was finished in the 20th and 5th day of the month, Elul, in 50. And two days. Fifty two days to build the wall. Fifty two days. Some of y'all just dawning on you. Fifty two days of resisting the enemy, of having a mind to work and a mind to maneuver. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes for they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. The storm has an ending the stars are coming. God's people have a mind to work. And God hasn't changed his mind about our destiny. In the darkness, in the clouds, in the storm, until the stars come out, we are going to build, we are going to fight, we are going to protect we are going to remember the call of God. We are going to remember the foundation on which we're built. 
We're going to remember the will of God for our lives here. And we are not coming down. I'm doing a great work. Why don't you come and find a place and let God remind you of your specific personal place in this great battle. In this raging battle, whether you understand the fullness of it or not, it has never been raging harder than it is right now. Somebody has to get it in their mind and spirit. I am doing a great work. I'm not unfocused. I'm not self-centered. I'm doing a great work. I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? No fear. I'm not going to come down to you. No doubt. I'm not going to come down to you. Unfaithfulness, sin, laziness, distraction. I am not going to come down. I'm going to remain where I need to be with a sword in my hand and a trowel in the other. I'm going to play my part. Oh my God, I don't want somebody to go down because I was off duty when I needed to be on duty. I needed to be praying. I needed to be building the wall. I needed to be guarding a foundation. Oh Jesus. Jesus, help me today. Help us today as the body you've called us to be. Help us to take it seriously. Oh God, this is life or death. This is life or death, Jesus. This is life or death, God. I don't want to be caught. I want to pray. I want to seek God. I want to be a part of the family of God. Lord, I can trust you in your ways. Defenseless. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Here we are, God. I don't want there to be another story about another group of people who fell by the wayside. I want to fight. I want to see your victory. I want to see your power amongst your people. Jesus, Jesus. my mind and my heart forgive me of my sins and my transgressions I want to be clean I want to be right I want to be connected I want to be engaged I want to know my part in this deadly deadly battle I want to do it with fearlessness Jesus 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 you to pray harder. You need to hope. It's needed. If God's called you to fast, if God's called you to reach out, whatever it is, it's a need. It's not an option. This is a deadly, deadly battle. Here we are. God, we're willing. We're willing. Jesus. Mighty, mighty God. We will not come down. We will not come down. God, I want to be faithful. God, I want to be faithful, Jesus.
difference? How close to God can I be? How effective can I be? How much further can I go in prayer? How much further can I go in protecting the wall, the foundation? God, I can trust you. That's one thing I know. I can trust you, Jesus. I need you.
can work it out? Do you believe there can be a wall built? Do you believe there's a foundation can be protected? In Jesus' name. God, you know, preachers are supposed to operate in spiritual things. But I'm here to tell you that our God can assist with anything. I have interesting stories in regard to that, but nevertheless, this was one such thing where there were a few little supernatural touches here and there by the leading of God. But the foundation we have Jesus front and center. We have the Word of God and holiness on the left and prayer and fasting on the right. And everything else built on top of that. We have the issues, all the things that are, as in the story, yelling for us to come down. Come down, stop building the wall. Stop guarding, stop doing what God has called you to do. Stop advancing in your destiny. Come down, be distracted by selfishness, pride, the flesh, laziness, unfaithfulness, fear, disobedience, stubbornness, discord and gossip, unthankfulness, stubbornness, lying, and at the very bottom of that, neglecting personal spiritual responsibility, which is all of what we have down here. This is years old, but it is just as relevant now as it was at the end of 2016 15 2015 so when it comes to what we are building how we're going to build it refer to this because his blueprints his blueprints never need updated the Word of God never needs an update. Who He is, <laughs> who we're supposed to, doesn't need an update. This does not need an update. I'm dismissing us here in just a moment. I just wanted to mention one verse again. In verse 9, it said, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto God and set a watch against them day and night because of them and the them give me your attention here just as we close please the them is all the people that were trying to kill and stop the people of God some things are worth day and night effort Some things are worth guarding day and night. And we're big enough to do something like that. You're dismissed in Jesus' name whenever you are ready to go. If God is still dealing with you, please stay and allow God to have his way. This is life or death, folks. This is life or death stuff we're dealing with here about eternity Jesus we got one shot I want to make it count I want to refuse to come down for anything in Jesus name